Good evening, good morning, good afternoon. Wherever you are, profit takers, welcome to another video. New week, new watch list, new trades, right? Same game though, right? <laughs> that doesn't change. The market is so repetitive, guys. We just have to get used to it, right? Get used to noticing the same patterns that are happening over and over again and not try to trick ourselves, right? The market is always trying to trick us, but we know better, okay? All right, let's get to it. Let's get to the charts straight away. So today, guys, um, let's see what happened. I dropped a couple of templates in the chats and the locals and the telegram. Um, and, you know, we're going to look at three pairs that I'm looking at for the week. Obviously, I'm looking at more. I'm using my little handy dandy cheat sheet here. OK, um, what do I call it? A cheat sheet? Because let me see if I can show you if you're not already familiar with the um I know I'm looking at a lot of stuff here <laughs> um this thing right here which once you figure out how to use this then you know it's golden okay um this indicator here, I don't like to use indicators as much in terms of EMAs or blah, blah, blahs, because then you get lost in the sauce. I want indicators that are going to be um, useful in helping me in my decision making, right? And minimizing what it is that I'm looking at, because overall I'm looking at, you know, where um, we are in the market maker cycle. And I'm looking at where price is, the highs and lows, the peaks, the new peak formation lows, or the new signal days, right? I'm really loving the uh, Stacey Burke mythology. It's very similar to Steve Murrow. And um, because I was so, I'm so deep ingrained in the Murrow, uh, you know, strategy, I just kind of blend them together and I take from both of them and I really enjoy it, right? Because there's some things that Burke had made sound so easy. I was like, oh, okay, did I miss that or something? And then I go back to a Muro video and it's like, oh, he did say it, but he just said it in a different way. But I will so still forever use this peak high indicator. This thing basically is, you know, when the higher highs and higher lows are set into the market and how many days away we want to trade from them, right? So those, this for me is great because I don't have to go and figure out if it's a new red day, green day. This thing is going to tell me that this is, you know, now a peak formation low and I love to trade, um, count the days from the peak. But at the same time, I love the concept of counting from day one with Monday and just, you know, using that to get back in get back into where you are. You know, sometimes you get lost in the sauce a little bit and you need something to bring you back to the basics, bring you back to square one. And then you just go from there. You just start from ground one. And that's, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, let's see. So let's look at UJ. UJ, I had posted in the chats. Um, we were going to the last drop for last week and it did exactly what we expected it to do. I love it when price behaves, right? Um, just real quickly, we're looking back. So today is Monday. It's a holiday. So there was no trading for me today. It really kind of felt like a Sunday since I did go, um, went, um, we did travel this weekend to a Drake concert back to Vegas. So funny. We lived in Vegas for three years and I went to a concert finally <laughs> that I had to fly back to go to. <laughs> uh, don't ask me why. Okay. So, um, so last week we had this low that came in on Wednesday. So, you know, throughout the week, prices will literally move from the, the opening range and then typically come back to it. Usually they do come back to the range, right? And that's what happened on the, the UJ, okay? So I marked that area. I counted the pushes, right? The pushes also are known as breakouts, right? There's so many different terminologies. I guess whichever one resonates with you that makes sense with you. You know, it took me a while because you're listening to so many different people and I had to just stop listening to so many different people. And that's why I really, it really resonated with me once I found Burke that I could actually use, you know, Burke and Murrow and put them together and it resonates, right? Because sometimes some people don't 
they use different terms and you can just, again, get lost in the sauce. And I don't really feel like doing all that, right? It takes so long to learn this thing. And, you know, the last thing I want to do is try to learn a whole new strategy. So I found a strategy that fits and I find people who trade that strategy so I can continue to learn and continue to grow and continue to share with you all, you know, at the same time. Okay. So, um, I already had this marked, I already had this dropped in the chats. So if you're not a part of the chats, all the stuff is in the comments. Would love for you to be a part of it. Um, that's where you can actually, um, communicate more and, you know, throw your ideas in there. Well, let's talk about it. Right. So again, Monday, uh, not Monday, but Thursday, um, actually that wasn't last week. That was almost two weeks ago. My apologies. Um, two weeks ago we had this push. So we had the first push. We always want to mark the high of that day and count that. The second push was the Friday. Again, you want to mark that area because we're looking for price to push through that. Okay. Um, and sometimes, you know, it doesn't happen always the following day, you're going to have some consolidation. And so once you see that happening, if you're coming into this Monday and you know, Mondays are kind of tricky to trade. Sometimes a lot of people don't trade Mondays. Sometimes there is a trade. Sometimes there isn't. And you could come in this trade. You can come in here on Monday thinking you're looking for this thing to, um, to go ahead and break through that high. And it doesn't right? It gives you this little peak high up here, and then it just breaks back down. And here's where Mura always used to say, right? Um, and you want to, that's why you want to make sure you do your highs and lows, because, you know, if you're looking for it to break up and it just continues to trade within the range after two hours of you getting into the market in your time and it, nothing happens like you wanted to, then you just want to call it for the day. Cause if you kind of look back, you're like, Hmm, it's been you know, only two pushes waiting for that third one. Nothing's happened. This is probably the day where price is going to just consolidate for a little bit. And you just kind of want to be a little bit patient and then wait for the next day. And this is the day on the Tuesday, which now finally price gave that third push. So we want to go ahead and extend out this, um, the previous day high. And I'm going to move it up. Well, actually, I don't want to do that because I just don't I'm going to keep it separate. Um, just going to copy this and I'm going to use that high right there. Okay. That high is going to be the target. Now let's see, let me go to H4 and go to the daily. All right. So when you have that, now you're looking when you, how are you going to get out? Right. So sometimes you do have to go back and see where price once was. <clears throat> and this one right here is giving me, um, let me take these highs up here. I'm going to use that. It's going to be my target. All right. I always like to use the stop hunts, but sometimes I'll come back into it right before the, the wick and I'll use that as well. If you don't have the indicator, cause the indicator is showing where the 3ADR is obviously, but honestly that hasn't happened yet right? It hasn't happened yet. We're trying to figure it out. Um, so this is probably one of the areas I'm going to use. Let me bring it down a little bit. Uh oh, okay. There we go. And it's right at the one, you can't see it on the screen, but, um, this orange line is the one of the quarters, uh, 147.5. So that you should be able to have on your chart somewhere to give you an idea, to give you a guide. And another thing with UJ, you can just do the 25 pips, um, 25 pip boxes outside of the range, right? That's another thing that you could do to, uh, to guide you. Cause we all know the stop hunts are usually 25 to 50 pips, right? So we know that we're going into that long trade with the UJ. So we want to, um, identify the high and low of that session, which is right here. Yeah, you can see that right here. Um, let me go ahead Let me go ahead. Yeah. Now we're on 30. Let me go down to M15. It's even more clear for you all to see, right? Again, this is, we're waiting for that third push and this is a parabolic setup. Okay. Let's see what it looks like on M5. Cause sometimes that could be even better. This is like one of my other favorite trade setups. Um, and I think Murrow calls it the 33 trade. I think it's called. And then, um, 
Stacy, you know, he just parabolic, right? That's what he calls it in his in his playbook. Um, okay, this thing is taking a little bit to get down to M5. Kind of a little slow today. This is MT4. <laughs> All right. Um, so sometimes it does drag a little bit. I'm, I'm literally fed up with it. I'm really trying to... MT5, I do use it a lot, but it, I don't have all of my stuff ready for it, right? With everything that I want to see um, in terms of the different indicators that are going to be useful for me, okay? All right, you see, why do I have this on this M M5? I have all these EMAs. You see all this drama on here? So I'm going to take that off. <clears throat> and now I'm getting a... Now this is hosed up just a little bit. Okay, let's just wait for it. If it takes a little bit too long, then let's see here. Yeah, this thing here is acting funny today. We're just gonna leave it right there, guys. We are gonna leave it on M15. Let's go back to Tuesday. All right, here we go. So as you can see, guys, prices were at the low. Nothing much happened on Monday, very low range trading I don't really care to do all that I don't care to scalp um, that way but you know just knowing that we have one more push to go and Monday was one of those days the op the range opened up you know that was the high and that was the low so now we're looking to break through that and as you can see on Tuesday you can see the daily high and low here right the previous day high um, would be your key for your entry as well um, if you were going to wait right but Honestly, once it broke, once it broke here, the previous day high, once it broke that, and then you had your, um, I wanted to show you something five, but it's really not letting me. But once you break this previous high right there within the actual range, then that for me is enough to know that I can go ahead and enter this trade. Okay. Some people might wait for this counter to close here and then they'll enter from there. But for me, this is enough confirmation, all right? This is enough confirmation, but some people would wait for this candle to break out and then boom, entry using this candle right there. Because sometimes, you know, you could come and get a retest, you could, right? And if you did, it's fine, it's quite all right. But this trade right here, this parabolic move right here, that is a trade setup that I'm looking for um, on for the third push. Okay. Third push. And that's all I'm looking for. And my target 25, 50 pips. That's really it. Um, so let me go ahead and draw some boxes here. Here's some other things you could do. Okay. Make your own indicators. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's see. Uh, 25. Boom. Dang. That was sweet. So we know this was the range, so you can definitely target that. Boom. And then boom. Okay, so there's your range. Our goal is a parabolic trade setup, 33 trade. Entry, you can use, you can definitely use this if you want. The previous day high as an entry if you want, or perhaps if you want to add to it. Because sometimes, you know, like I said, if it's, if you're looking for that pullback to add on, nine times out of ten, you're probably not going to get that on this parabolic trade. But, you know, I'm just saying. It's really up to you how you want to do it. But that is a possible entry. And definitely our target is anywhere between 25 to 50 pips. And then, at the course, at the very top here, if you didn't enter this, you definitely you still need to count it. And then you got your other two boxes here. Um of what you can use, All right? And this is definitely how I would get out of the trade. And that's it. It's a beautiful trade setup, right? And that's it, okay? So um, so now let's kind of go back. That was that third trade, right? That's what we were um, waiting for on that Tuesday. And then as the new week came into play, well, I mean, we were, that was a new week as a new as the week was progressing now we're looking for prices to push through right after um that happened you took this trade because this was definitely if you were trading london or into new york that was your trade 
New York, you definitely were looking for the reversal. Okay. So these, this, this trade, this parabolic trade setup could mean two things, right? It's that last push up and it's your three day trade, right? It's definitely your three day trade reversal. So that was Tuesday. So one, two, and three, right? And so now you have the reversal. If you're in New York and that's your window, then you have the opportunity to trade that reversal. So after that trade was done, you would have done the same thing. I don't need to redraw these boxes, but you could have just used those same boxes to take you back down um, to this target here and just be done trading for the day, right? Or you could have used the previous day's low as a target as well, which is always ideal once that happens. So now you start to count again, you have your first push and then now you're waiting for the second one and just needed to just beat that last push. Okay. Now the breakthrough, right? The breakthrough <laughs> breakout. Okay. Um, and then here, you know, choose on Thursday, Friday, cause last week was non-farm. So I should have really counted this, but I just left it. Right. I don't know. I just said, you know what? Let me see this. You're it's always going to be, I'm going to say always, but most likely you're going to see four pushes. Okay. Um, so this one should have been three and then this was the four, but I just counted this because it was really, actually it was really extending out and you had this previous week's low that I was looking for price to get to anyway. Right. That was the goal. Um, not sure, you know, sometimes they're going to give you a huge stop hunt here and that's going to continue to induce people to go short. Um, but we know better than that because it already, this technically, you know, you could probably call it a two and a half, but I don't want to start making up stuff here. I'm just saying on, based on what Burke always says, non-farm week can be four day template. So looking for, um, this low hanging fruit, fruit, if you will, um, price has already beat that out. So, you know, to expect at least one more push down to hit that previous week's low before you get that reversal trade on Friday. And I did take the reversal one on Friday. I took it short and I took it long on Friday because I already knew we were ready to go to, for the long for this coming week. Okay. So now we have our first push up and today again, it was a holiday. So we are now looking for, um, well, I'm looking to, to continue to go long. So price could just continue to range a little bit. Um, I'm looking for, you know, entry around this area. Um, from yesterday's high to target to go back up into this high here, this line that I drew here. Um, and then of course we have our 380 R there, but my target is not going to be way up there. It's just going to be either one of these two highs, this high or that high. And that will be the trade that I'm looking for on Tuesday, right? For it to finally clear that imbalance there and come back to this area or perhaps even this purple area is another quarter point there. That's one, four, seven dot five. Now, um, that's how that's it. Really. That is all I am waiting for. You know, markets are technically still moving, but again, it is, it is a holiday. And, um, usually if price, if markets are moving, they usually stop around noon Eastern time. Sometimes you'll see them kind of start slowing down. Um, maybe at nine or 10 or so, but today, for whatever reason, you know, they're just trickling on, you know, just trickling on. It's very slow. There's no really need to trade. But if you were in the market for the Asia, uh, London stop hunt, you were able to get some trades, but I was asleep. <laughs> okay. So that's what I'm looking for, for UJ for this week. EJ is a different story. Let's see. Let's take a look at it. That's AJ. Let's go. Where is AJ? Let's see. Okay. Here it is. Okay. So EJ, we're definitely looking for shorts in the market. Um, as you can see here, guys, um, Thursday, um, we got the pump for Wednesday and the dump, which was our signal day technically, right? Friday with non-farm, you know, I was looking for a decent short trade. We got that short trade in the London market, but it didn't really play that well for Friday. Um, 
So today prices came all the way back to the low. So of course we're expecting it to go back high. And again, beautiful trade for the early um, session traders, Asia, London to go long. And now I'm just waiting, you know, once this market is done, I'm gonna come here and finish drawing out my highs, highs and lows because what are we looking for? We're looking for price to obviously take out the previous day's low. Right now, I don't know what that is other than this low right now. We'll see what happens when the market is done for today, but I am definitely looking for this one to take us down. We got one more push or so here to go. And, and that's that. And I think overall, I think EJ, the last time I checked, it was still, let's see. Oh, it's finally going short. It was long, but now we are going short, guys. Look at that. That's four hours. Let's see what the day is looking like. Yeah. Don't mind this right here. <laughs> um, all right. I'm happy with that. I love to trade. I like to know where the trend is, right? The higher time frame trend, because to me, it makes me feel a lot better when I'm shorting or counter, sorry, when I'm doing a counter trend on whether or not I'm going to hold it or not, you know? So, um, I like it when they all line up nicely. All right. So the other thing I'm looking at is CJ. I think that one is also long. Where is CJ, that's UJ. Oh, no, that's UJ. Let's see here, if this is it. Nope. Oh, there it is, sorry. I know I always do that, guys, because for whatever reason, you know, I didn't make that indicator, but it never, you can never fully see all the instruments properly. All right, so this one, same same as UJ pretty much. Again, looking for prices to um, to continue on long. So once this wrench, this right now we're basically, we broke out of the initial range, but we've extended the range already for today. So tomorrow when I come back here, I'm definitely gonna look for prices to test or retest the previous day's high here for me to go in on this long um, for that initial, um, that second push, because we want to go ahead and count um, this one right here. It's going to be one. So I'm going to wait for the second one. But my favorite one, obviously, is the third push. Right, the third push with the parabolic setup. But we should have a nice trade after prices break out of this range for the for Monday's range. Okay. So just keep your eyes open for that. And let's see. EA, I did um oh that's not EA, that's GA. Where are you, EA? There you are. Alright, for EA, let me go to the one that I marked up for y'all. So this one is definitely going into week two of shorts. So we had a ranging market last week. Um, finally, you know, prices started to um, show up on, I think it was Thursday, Friday, we had a slight, you know, a nice little trade. It wasn't anything like the Friday, the Thursday's trade though. <laughs> but nonetheless, um, we had a, we're still in, we're short, we're in short for this week for the Euro Aussie going into the second week of shorts. So definitely guys, um, looking for this one to, um, do a stop hunt high and a drop. Let's go back down to H1. As you can see here, we had um, literally three days of range. Prices came back to the high, so that was two times to the high. And with that, um, gave us that best trade, right? This gave us our best trade setup when this happened you know, when the markets opened on Thursday. So we were in, you know, looking for shorts. This was three days and then the trade, right? And then Friday with non-farm, we had a beautiful reversal. Then we had the railroad track set in. It was super duper clear, 
for the early people. And I always talk about these trades because I used to wake up early. I don't wake up as early, you know, three o'clock, 3 a.m. is where I need to be to make these London trades, okay? If that's your trades time, this is perfect for you. New York, the perfect time to be here is of course between starting at eight to 11. And then, you know, that third hour is always good, 10 o'clock it is like on and popping. Sometimes it happens sooner, but as long as you're available within that time frame, you can catch the trades. All right. And then of course with London, 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m., the trade is almost done. By the time I'm getting to the markets now, the trade set up that for, for London is pretty much almost done. Just sometimes it may, sometimes I get lucky and the trade is happening on that third hour, which is great for me because then I'm, I'm getting up and I'm like, oh, shoot, let me get in here. And I'll just get in, right? I'm not even going to lie. I'll just get in that trade um, if it is moving a little later than what it normally would for these type of pairs, right? So we know with US, we want to look at the indices. Obviously, gold usually moves pretty good all of the, all of the time. Um, and I noticed today that... The, I think it was US 30 and some of these indices were moving pretty nicely today. And I was like, well, gosh, dog, why y'all doing this while I'm not at the market? <laughs> right. Sometimes that just happens. It is what it is. But definitely Euro Aussie is definitely um, going into the third, second week of shorts or the third week, because if you consider this area here where we had our initial peak high, uh -oh, let me go bring that back. This could be our third week of shorts, actually. That was definitely a peak high. This was the next peak retest to the high, and this looks like our third one. So this is probably the last week of shorts, not the second, my bad. I forgot about that. So, um, so yeah, level three, you know how that is. It looks just like this, right? But hopefully we have some nice moves here and we know what to expect. So don't forget, you wanna count your pushes out now that this week has started, again, I'm going to wait for it to finish up. And I see that prices have already set the low. Okay. And waiting for this whole high here to finish setting. And then we'll just go from there. All right. We'll just go from there and um, look to see if we're going to get a stop on high drop for tomorrow or not. Right. That's just really it. It's either going to range, break out, reverse, break out trend. Right. So we know that and we're okay with whatever it is that it's going to do. We just want to be prepared. And if we do get in and if we're wrong, okay, then we're wrong. Then we just adjust. Okay. Cause sometimes you will get your hit and stops going to get hit. Are you going to be able to get back in that trade? That's really the question. Okay. So we'll see tomorrow. Tuesday is probably going to be looking good. Um, you know, we're going to count again. I posted this GU one for everyone. Um, and again, like I was saying, it had beautiful pump here, you know, somewhat of a, of a, of a decent, you know, not really decent, you know, just a little bit of a short here trade to take here, but nothing, nothing too fancy. Right.